Today, I'm Sumit. I'm the founder and CEO at AppFormix. Uh, you know, let me just start and tell you a little bit about AppFormix and what we're trying to achieve. So we started about two years ago. Uh, we're in downtown San Jose. It's beautiful down here. A little away from the banding Palo Alto, you know, because we wanted to kind of stay in stealth as long as we could. And now we're starting to roll out our software and the company. So what we are trying to achieve is enable enterprises to build better cloud experiences for their users, right? Uh, prior to starting AppFormix, I was at Azure. Uh, I was running part of networking for Azure, working on the hybrid cloud scenario. And uh, there's this real traction, like people moving to the cloud, uh, and at the same time, real traction in the sense that people want to enable like a hybrid experience. They want to be running resources on on-prem in their data centers, they want to use resources that are running in the public cloud. But then when you look at that, what you realize is that at that stack that's running inside the enterprises, it's very immature, it's very naive. It, it has a long way to go before it's kind of at par with what's running in AWS or what's running in Azure, what's running in Google, to really enable that fluid infrastructure experience, that where, where you can get to a point where you have a workload running on-prem, or running off-prem, and you get kind of getting the same kind of services from your cloud infrastructure layer that's running. So AppFormix is about building a better cloud for the enterprise IT. It, you're, you're an enterprise, you want to enable a cloud experience, you use us to enable that cloud experience, right? Now while I say that, we as a company do not offer the software that enables the cloud itself. So for example, uh, you could use something like OpenStack to get that cloud up and running, right? What we offer is a layer that sits on top of whatever that management stack is that you're using. Our layer sits on top of that and enables a very rich self-service IT experience for all of the users in your enterprise. It enables, a, let's just say, a very rich analytics-driven experience for all the users and the applications as well as the operators, which allows them to easily troubleshoot their infrastructure and run it efficiently, right? So to us or to me, and what a better cloud means is a cloud that's easy to operate, right? A cloud that, uh, you know, kind of like applications can tell, tell inform, like as in they can tell the cloud, hey, this is what I expect from you, and then the cloud responds and gives those resources to the, to the application. So that's what AppFormix is about. So the two main things then that we do, right, the first one is infrastructure visibility. What our software does is gives you full stack visibility of your entire cloud infrastructure. So we start at the very low level hardware layer, what's, what's going on with the hardware down you know, going up to what's happening at the system level, what's happening at the virtualization level, and if you're running containers, what's happening with the containers. Now, what's, what's key here is that if, if you look at how people are enabling clouds, um, there's this drive towards using more and more commodity hardware components, and then using some kind of software innovation on top of that commodity to enable cloud. So for example, OpenStack or Kubernetes, right? You, you take that commodity hardware, you layer it, layer the software on top and that's your, that's your cloud. In, within that framework, uh, visibility, you know, get, gaining that visibility into the, the hardware layer and how the software and the applications are inter interacting with that hardware layer becomes extremely important. Because if you, if you don't have that visibility, you don't have a reliable infrastructure. So it, it's really about delivering that reliable infrastructure, right? Now, once you have that visibility, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with it, right? Things like capacity planning. You, you can figure out how your resources are being consumed, right? Who are the users who are abusing the resources? What's working, what's not working? Where are the, where are the hot spots? Things like that. And then if, if all of these analytics, right, if you can get them in real time, then you can use all of that data to operate your cloud infrastructure in, in like, in, 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 a, in, a, in a model where it's orchestrated, right? So things like 
you, you have a virtual machine running. If we can figure out that, hey, that on this host, there's contention or there's problems, we can automatically relocate those virtual machines for you. So we then end up improving the reliability of your cloud infrastructure. So can I ask a question there? Yeah. So you, you're relocating the virtual machine between clouds? No, be between, so step one, right? What, what our primary, primary goal right now is to enable that a better cloud experience in the private enterprise. So whatever your private enterprise cloud is, mm -hmm. we relocate the virtual machine from one host to the other within the bounds of that private cloud. Okay. Right? Once we are successful in achieving that goal uh, for our customers, then we take it to the hybrid cloud scenario where that cloud can be federated. It's, it's on-prem. It's made up of a mix of resources on-prem and in the public cloud. And you talk about your on-premises clouds. Mm -hmm. What do you support at the moment and what do you talk to at the moment? So currently what's generally available, what, like what's we, what we've deployed for customers is uh, just either uh, vanilla KVM virtualization yep. or OpenStack running on top of that. Okay. Those are our two primary, uh, essentially our primary build outs today with our customers, right? We also have a version that works with Hyper-V. Okay. Right? And we have a, we have a version that's in beta, beta that works with Kubernetes. AppFormix is an active contributor to Kubernetes, and that's going to be GA Q1 of next year. Okay. Right? But, you know, within the scope of things, right? So the, the visibility that, that we can get for you we focus on the real-time visibility so that we can orchestrate the infrastructure to improve the reliability of, of your cloud. And we, we, we give you all of the long-term visibility so that you can do better planning of your cloud. Like how is it being consumed and how, how you could consume it better, how you could run it more efficiently. So we cover both the spectrums, right? Just, just the high level of the, prod, of the product. So it's a, it's a centrally managed solution. Right? The, the way our software is designed um, is essentially it runs entirely on-prem. Okay. It's not a SaaS offering. Now, technically, there's nothing preventing us from taking our software and running it on Amazon and saying, hey, we are SaaS, but that's not what we are after. All of the customers that we, that where, where we run, have, you know, for, for those customers, having control over their environment over the data, it's extremely important to them. And they want an offering that's running on-prem that they have control over. So then what we have is essentially software that is packaged as Docker containers that spins up, you know, those, those containers spin up within the customer environment and enable a SaaS offering within the customer environment for the users, right? It's centrally managed up top. And then what's really happening is that we have agents that we install on all of the all of the hosts that you want to monitor, mm -hmm. right? Now, what's what's key there is that the agent is installed on the host. We don't touch the virtual machine or the container or the application. We we don't have any hooks in there either. It's an agent that's fully contained in the host. And what this agent is doing is both uh, kind of like and like reading all of these metrics, the, you know, the infrastructure metrics, the the system metrics, the the virtualization metrics, as well as analyzing them in real time. So essentially what we do is we take your entire cloud infrastructure and turn it into some sort of like a big data infrastructure as well. So while we are gathering all of the metrics, we're also analyzing them. And then the benefit of that is that you don't need to set up a second infrastructure to collect and then analyze all of your data. So our goal is to get as close to real time with our analysis as possible. So if I'm right in saying then, your agents on your hosts do all the analysis, and then where's it stored after that? So is there a central database somewhere, sort of yeah. a, a master of your agents? Yeah, so we, we'll cover the ar architecture, detailed architecture in the next segment, okay. but that's roughly the idea. I mean, okay. a high level is that there's an agent that goes on the host, it doesn't touch the VMs, it doesn't touch the containers, not the apps. It's on the host, but it can do the entire introspection of the full, full stack 
it can both gather the metrics, it can analyze the metrics, and then it's, it's, the way it's built is that it's popping them on a message bus, and then there's, we have various components that sit off the message bus, and that's how the system is built. Okay. But this agent on its own is a fully functional system as well. And when you say host, yes. you mean like the vCenter server? What it, what it... So when, when I say host is uh, a, not your v, vCenter server, but a compute node on which you spin up your virtual machine. A blade, a VM or Hyper-V. A blade or server, whatever, yeah? Make sure it was on the same. Yeah. 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 KVM or Hyper-V. So each compute node yeah. that you want to mm -hmm. monitor, analyze, mm -hmm. gets one of these. So why do you have to install something on the host? Uh, don't they deliver enough data by themselves? Oh, who? Who would deliver the data? Well, well, for uh, for example, the the, the Hyper-V host or the KVM host, don't they um, deliver enough counters for you to just collect them instead of really having to install an, uh, something on the host? So that would be, uh, I would say, the traditional way of building such a system, where you'd kind of piggyback on what's there, mm -hmm. try and read it, post it somewhere, read it again, and then analyze it. We're taking a different approach. The agent that we are running on the host is analyzing in real time as well. And because it's running on the host and analyzing in real time, we can do the analysis at sub-second granularity. Okay. What's so, the overhead for the agent then? Because it must have some kind of overhead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, currently what we've done is it's what we've benchmarked it to about 0.1% per instant that's running on the host. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's right, that's... and uh, one, of the, one, of our, one of the our key innovations is to like continue to keep improving the efficiency of that agent, right? So, is, I mean, is, it, is it really, no, of course it is, otherwise you wouldn't build it, but why was it necessary to um, get the analysis so quickly? Because why can't you be one minute behind? So if, if let's say, it, uh, you, if you really want to, um, let, let's think about it this way. If, we, if what we want to achieve is better reliability, right, then we want to figure out if a problem is happening potentially even before it happens. At that first sign that something is about to happen mm. is when we want to detect it so that we can do something about it. The goal is to prevent that problem from happening. The goal is to prevent the service disruption from happening. So in that kind of an environment, I would say time matters. Okay, and, and then the, the normal KVM and Hyper-V counters aren't uh, um, fast enough or conclusive enough? No, the, no. so I mean, if, if I, uh, I'm happy to talk about architecture all day, but th let's think about this, right? We, you make an agent, you install it on the system. That agent is spending a lot of time in grabbing these, these metrics, packaging those metrics, and then sending them off from the server, right? You actually spend more time in packaging and sending them off than doing the analysis. Okay. Right? So now if you use our architecture, we can be analyzing them at a very at a much higher frequency. We if then following that we have this message bus architecture. If something, if we detect that hey, there is some condition that needs attention, it's it's put on that message bus instantly. Okay. Right? So Whereas the the metrics that potentially really don't matter. You don't need to grab them that fast. They can kind of like leave that server at that slower pace. So, so is it the agent that puts it on the message bus? Absolutely. So you don't then, it's not your central management whatever software. No. Reading it, analyzing it, no. putting it on. So it yeah. makes it much faster. The agent can immediately Absolutely. tell the rest of the world. And that, okay. that's the thing. The agent is a fully functional system on its own. It's an autonomous system. It, it can read the metrics. It can analyze the metrics and it can put these signals out on a message bus for you, right? And you can directly consume them if you want. So the, the way we've designed our software essentially is built layer upon layer upon layer. Each layer has a very well-defined API and can, can function entirely on its own. So does that mean it's hugely highly scalable because you've got a single message bus but multiple endpoints, yes. but there, you don't have to have a, a super duper central controller that has to have huge amounts of CPU memory to analyze all the endpoints. That's the point, right. Okay. So we're kicking the CPU utilization down a level. What's the impact, what's the overhead of the agent? So the, in, in this case, because uh, the, the agent is just reading and doing the analysis, the overhead is purely in terms of CPU. 
And what we benchmarked it to is about 0.1% per, per virtual machine that's running on, on the host. But in our benchmarking, we tend to like load up the agents with uh, several different, uh, what we call event, events, event rules. We'll, we'll talk about those more later. But in, in reality, what we found is that like on, in practice, when we have been in customer environments, a host loaded with about 60 virtual machines uses about a percent of the, of, of the overall host CPU capacity. So it's, and quite frankly, we know we can do better and we will do better than that too. But that's what drives us, right? It, it's, we, we want to build a system that's able to detect problems before they happen. That's, that's our goal. So we so want- From a, and I'm pretty sure you get into this, but it integrates with Kubernetes, OpenStack, and we're talking KVM and OpenStack primarily, so my Nova nodes and my uh, KVM nodes in general. What's the Kubernetes play? Because most of the discussions I've heard around Kubernetes have been around uh, managing not necessarily bare metal itself, but the, the container host. And container hosts are usually not KVM machines. Yeah. So are we, are we, this is, there's an agent for a generic Linux agent that's for managing container hosts? It's the same agent. Okay. Right. And so, but here, here is the, I mean, I missed this. So thank you for bringing this up. So now data without context is useless, right? So what we get from Kubernetes and what we get from OpenStack is all of the context. Right? What that means is that, that right now, now, right, because because we make our agent aware of the context, when we are doing the analysis, while we are doing the analysis, we know exactly what we are analyzing. We know, hey, that, hey, this is an instance, it belongs to a particular user, it's running this application, right? This is what it's expecting. What the controller does is kind of like configure the agent and, and tell it about all of this context that exists in the management stack. Right? And while this analysis is happening, the agent has all of the context available to it. And that's why when it's generating a signal, it's not just saying, aha, there's something wrong in this server. It's saying that, hey, on this server, there is this virtual machine that belongs to this project that was spun up by this user that, that has something wrong with it. So you can consume that signal instantly and, and do something useful with it. So, so, I'm sorry, so the messages are not just and you have the picture up here, so it's not just VM centers, but it's also container centers. Yeah. So this container is doing something that it shouldn't be doing, or acting and behaving in a manner that's weird. Do something. Yeah, and uh, absolutely true. And the way we work as a company, uh, we uh, a lot of what we've done has come from direct requirements from our customers. Mm -hmm. And so. When, when we see the demo, you'll see that the agent can analyze a whole bunch of metrics. And as you know, we talk to customers, they, they say, hey, how about this, how about that? We improve the agent as well, right? So, and that's, that's really what the process is here. So let me go through this slide quickly now, and then I'm stealing Travis's show, so <laughs> let, let me just go through this quickly now. So it's an agent installing on the host, and uh, it's, it's it's putting these signals on a message bus, and then eventually what, what you get, get as a user is one central API, one central dashboard, where you can consume all of these, right? And that experience is entirely role-based. So if, again, in the context of OpenStack, we integrate with it, so whatever authentication that OpenStack was using, we get that same authentication, you log in, and based on those credentials, your views are customized for you. You only get access to the information that, that you're allowed to have access to. Extremely important because you know on a host you can have virtual machines that belong to different users, and if you're grabbing those signals, you only want to get the signals that are for your virtual machines and not for somebody else's, right? And uh, in in the spirit of simplicity, the other thing that we've really focused on as a company is is the installation experience. How do we take that OpenStack environment and how do we get our software on there? It's uh, and you know we, we'll talk about that a little more, but we've tried to make it as painless as possible, right? It's it's been key, and again, entirely driven by APIs. We have a pretty cool dashboard as well, but the key thing is the APIs. Now, this same agent that sits on the host, 
right? If you do enable the hybrid cloud scenario, then you take that agent and you install it in your virtual machine that's running in the cloud as well, and we can aggregate all those metrics for you. Sorry, because you, earlier you were saying this is private cloud only. Yeah. How is this, <clears throat> when you're talking about the hybrid cloud and AWS in particular, yeah. you, how does that correlate with your previous comment about this is an on-premises only so, solution? Uh, all of our current customers we, we help them enable that private cloud, their private cloud. We help them improve their, their private cloud experience. But then as we, as we are expanding as a company, the broader use case is the hybrid cloud, right? And in that scenario, we can cover both the on-prem and the off-prem. But, but the off-prem would be an agent within a VM to within the containers, because obviously you haven't got any visibility of AWS's host itself. To Absolutely. So then you sit on the, on the VM, and then in that case, the primary scenario we're going after is people spinning up containers within the VM. Okay. That, that's going to be our primary scenario there. So to be clear, what cloud... So with it being an in-guest agent, I'm yeah. assuming you don't really care where it sits, essentially, because it's in AWS, we don't Azure, care. vCloud Air. Yeah. Go fill your boots, basically, yeah? Okay. It, it could be anything, right? And, and we'll show you the install experience. It's, it, you just say, hey, install something there, we install it. It could be a virtual machine, it could be a bare metal host. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it could be anything is, is the point. And we aggregate all of the information and put it on the same dashboard for you. Yeah, cool. Right? Got it. Now, uh, we mostly already talked about this, uh, but the two main things that we do, analytics and orchestration, and that's basically our two product modules. Right? What's, what's currently GA is analytics. What will be GA in Q1 of, uh, what's currently in beta and will be GA in Q1 of 2016 is all of the orchestration pieces. We'll be showing you both today, right? And uh, analytics is, the, the real time aspect is about improving the, you know, the efficiency and the reliability of your infrastructure. And then the, the long term data is for doing all of your capacity planning, right? And then, uh, again, uh, I mean, I do come from like a pretty core networking background, so we have some additional elements, some magic sauce in our system that, uh, that we can use to give you like very detailed analytics about how your uh, applications are performing with, in terms of I.O. So, so, so you talk about alarms here. Are alarms based around hard thresholds? So 80% CPU trigger an alarm, or is it based around dynamic thresholds where you learn behavior over time? Yeah, so we, we can do both, Okay. right? Out of the box, uh, you get things like uh, hard thresholds, you get deviations, you get percentiles, you get moving averages. But the, the thing to keep in mind, I mean, the way we've designed our system is that we keep, I mean, I'll keep coming back to it, there's a message bus there, right? And essentially what we are doing is that on, on that message bus, we have different uh, analyzers, right? And those analyzers can do the dynamic baselining for you, right? So it really depends on the customer and how they want to run the environment and we kind of reconfigure our system to help them run it like that. Okay. Right? And in, in terms of partnerships, uh, the first thing, right? I mean, about OpenStack. So really our, our value is in working with existing OpenStack distributions. We don't have our own OpenStack distribution. We are partners with Mirantis. We are partners with Ubuntu and Red Hat as well. And in our existing customer base, we, we have customers that use, use those three. We even have customers that use uh, Rackspace uh, enterprise distribution, right? And uh, everything that we do here works with uh, Docker, it works with OpenStack, it works with Kubernetes, right? In, in fact, Anytime, like, and we kind of like building our stuff and in our regression, when we run our regression, we run it across Linux, we run it across Hyper-V, we run it across VMs, we run it across containers. That's kind of like one of the core things we've done since very early in building software here, right? And then in terms of hardware, uh, we do try and uh, work closely with Intel to, let's just say, grab metrics that uh, can really pinpoint how workloads are performing on Intel hardware, right? And uh, this is again, same marketing spiel again, so I'll just skip it, but <laughs> high level, we want to improve the ROI, right? We want to improve the efficiency of infrastructure, we want to lower the management cost, as in fewer people 
are able to now manage your large cloud infrastructure, right? And then we enable the operators to, you know, move from this way of move from this mode of being reactive and firefighting to being able to set policies and set alarms and being proactive in in, in operating the cloud environment. And in, for the developers, we love developers, and really that's one of the reasons why we are such an API-driven company. What we want to be able to do is essentially give them all the APIs that they need to enable, like, you know, to build out these better applications that run in their private cloud environment, right? And that's like a big gap when you look at what's running in the private cloud versus what's running in, let's say, in Amazon or Google, right? The, the richness of the APIs, I mean, there's just a very big gap there.